you watch Good Mythical Morning? No, because unlike you, I can't handle those guys' faces and hair. <laughs> That's beyond my tolerance. They have a uh, character on the show called Cotton Candy Randy. Anyway. Sounds great. <laughs> He's constantly talking about killing both of them. That's the fun part. Okay, all right. Is well, it's, uh, it's weird. I don't know. I was just going to... They're so milk toast. But that's what they do. They make a show. They make a show for like 12 to 18, and we make a show for 50 to 75. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not enough geriatrics <laughs> to keep our show afloat. I'm I'm a, I'm an offensive weirdo. It's true. I I don't know why I'm poo pooing on them for being all you know <laughs> attractive and normal. <laughs> Patrick's not in the room, we can have a conversation that he would not stand for. And that's a conversation thanking all of you for listening to the filth chamber. He doesn't look at the stats. He has no idea who's listening, when, why, uh, even where you guys are from. But I see it. I look at it and I'm actually really fucking blown away at the reach, the response, the fact that anyone listens to us two idiots talking to a microphone at all. It's something that I'm very grateful for. I appreciate every single one of you and I hope that we can continue entertaining you and we don't jump the shark and disappoint you anytime soon. Can you cut the suicide note? It's not a suicide note. It's not a suicide note. It's a love letter to our listeners. I'm Folks, I'm saving the listening. podcast now because he's inevitably ruining it. While I went to the bathroom, I, all, I came in and I heard a suicide note happening. You're actually proving a point I made when you weren't even in the room, which is that you I'm, would I'm not stand for this talk. <laughs> I'm good at that. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good at not knowing what's happening. Hey, well, you do. You wear it well. Thank you. <laughs> Getting cut out, cut out of the show because it's boring for the kids. You don't even know who the kids are that listen to the show. You don't know where they're at, where they're from, why they listen. I just want to save some babies. <laughs> save some babies. Oh, God, this is the part I'm going to have to edit out, everybody. Which means that it's not going to be edited out, as per the filth chamber usual. If I say I'm going to edit it out, except for the parts I have edited out that you haven't heard, which is like snuff movies. You guys have no <laughs> idea. Like we've had police bust in in the middle of this podcast, fires. Uh, we had a third mic that died one time. Uh, we rose the dead. Well, raised, rose, fuck. Whatever the term is, it got cut out. Uh, Jack Brown uh, had a child live on the podcast. Um, he surprised us all. We uh, we reenacted an episode of Dark Shadows that I wrote. It's that was Barnabas. It didn't work. <laughs> the fact that you even know that reference is why we're friends. Okay, because th- th- that is not a cool reference. <laughs> Especially after Tim Burton fucking raped what was left I of was that. gonna ask what you thought about that, Christ. but I think you just told me. Oh my god. Dropping a hard ape on that, huh? No, but you got I uh, see, I'm not gonna... Uh, do you really want me to talk about Dark Shadows on the podcast? It was, it was, hold on, hold on, before you do, please yes. remember to like, comment, subscribe, and <laughs> leave a review. Smash that like button, everybody, please. for our Dark Shadows fan cast. Now, this is the Dark Shadows after show. This is episode 537, where Barnabas discovered puffy shirts. <laughs> We got plenty more. I mean, it's the Halloween episode. You know, we gotta we gotta have something. Oh, thank you for for assuming I'm gonna make the edit by <laughs> Halloween. You son of a bitch! I'm working on your song, my song, VHS. This, uh, this 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 is your Christmas. <laughs> yeah, pizza is gainfully unemployed. Hire me. Send me money. Uh, buy some axe slasher shit. Don't hire him. 
Uh, Hire him as a man ho. Keep me busy on Twitter. A uh, uh, he ho. Let me feel like I'm doing something productive and, and respond to my shit. Don't listen to him. Hire him as a gigolo. He'll do anything, anything for like Bitcoin. I'd be the worst gigolo. He's your prophet dancer, dancer for money. That's not what you put on. Any old music will die. That's not what you told me before we made the ad. <laughs> but you asked me a whole menu and told me to cross off things I didn't want to do. I got Tina Turner to do the theme to your ad, and you don't even appreciate you, hee ho. <laughs> Hire this man as your hee ho. He'll be your private dancer. We're here with Albert in the filth chamber. Uh, Albert. Yes, Albert is a uh, a rotting bulldog who is um, kind of a combination between. Um, well, he's your homunculus. Well, he's a homunculus. He's one of those things from Ghostbusters. He's a little slimery. But he's also one of those hellhounds from Ghostbusters. Yes. The terror dog. Yeah, that's right. And he's also the thing from the box from Creep Show on a certain level. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> yeah. Al? Oh, if only <laughs> if like only that. the microphones could capture his necrotic essence, because Al is uh, um, 78 years old in bulldog years. He's always seeping fluids from every hole. He's skittish right now. I'm not going to say why, <laughs> but I I'll just tell you, it was a mistake putting peanut butter on your microphone tonight. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> Al's a little uh, gun shy, as they. Uh, <laughs> well, no, a bad experience. A bad experience will do that to you. Al, do you have a Me Too story for me? It was very romantic. That's from, what they all say. From okay, I might have Harvey Weinstein him. You do wear a robe. You do wear a robe. He had a robe on too. He had a little tiny robe on. Oh, if he has a robe, <laughs> let's put it on him right now. <laughs> what? Yeah, what do you need? You, you want to go out? Tell us. All right, hold on. This idiot needs to go out. Can I put something on here to uh, yes. distract you? Yes. <laughs> I'm like a baby. You got to shake some keys in front well, of me. Yeah, I, I, well, because it's going to be you alone with the audience, and it's just going to oh, be, Christ. you know, sit there in silence farting while they judge you. Hopefully. Oh, shit. If you would like to rank my farts, at Axlasher on Twitter and Instagram. You follow uh, Paul Flart. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about? Yeah, the guy. I love his reaction to getting fired and the way that he just started <laughs> filming it. And they're like, you need to turn that off. And he goes, why? You're firing me. I don't need to do anything you tell me to do. <laughs> Today, yes, I'm a huge fan. Uh, I I knew that bef like, <laughs> I knew that you were going to be a huge fan of his even oh. before anything came out. <laughs> well, I'm surprised you didn't do a competing series. No, I'm surprisingly fart shy for how disgusting I am as a human just overall. Maybe I'm a little similar in, in the same way that I don't really get off on farting in front of people unless it's like really funny. Like if it's just kind of a haha, -ha, then I'm not really interested. <laughs> but if it's like a if it's like a whole group of people watching a movie and I can come up behind you and like right. really let a frog rip, then I'm interested. Yeah, you know, like something that could have a tagline attached to it. I'm really interested like in those a, a types Freddy, of Like a Freddy line yeah. level fart. Welcome to prime time, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> You're right, right. Like, wow, he really, that fart, he really sent that home. Exactly. But like, if it's just like in the middle of a sentence, like a, <laughs> eh, what a it's not worth like the derailment of conversation just for like a, a chuckle, you know, like it's got to be. Yeah. Well, yeah, the silent, but violent, but I must have a I, lot of uh, what is it called? Mucoid plaque. Uh, oh, Jesus me. Christ. <laughs> I'm going to have to edit that out. That's that's horrific. Okay, I made the mistake of Googling that today. <laughs> Number one, that is a crypticus song title. I have called it. <laughs> Coin and mint it. That mucoid plaque. Have you ever looked that up on the internet? No, because I'm full of it and I don't want to know. <laughs> like, I have so much mucoid plaque in me that it stops me from looking it up, like the blob. It's yeah. Mucoid plaque is built up from 
your body uh, producing extra mucus and you swallowing it Check. because it's having issues digesting what you're putting into it. Check. And it hardens into like a tire rubber inside of your intestines. Mm-hmm. So when Check. you do these, and Check. when you do these, uh, uh, what do you call them? Cleanses or colonic. All that shit comes out. But the funny thing about it is it stays in the shape of like your intestines. So like people shit out these like two and a half feet long, like just t- rubber fucking lengths of intestine. And then I, I've done that. Yeah. Well, no, you have to do the cleanse though. Oh, you 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 shit out your own mucus for some blood. other reason. <laughs> That's already happened. So I'm good. Well, you like to peg, so you got to <laughs> clean things. <laughs> How dare you? That's not on the show, sir. I don't want to discuss that on the show. That's for for behind the scenes. I think that would be hot fire if you were into if you were into pegging. That'd be something that's interesting. No, I frequently, literally, gild my turds, which is a, a is a very difficult smelting process. But doesn't the turd evaporate? Yes, the, uh, but the gold remains. <laughs> it's like it's bronzing, a fossil. It's like bronzing a baby shoe. <laughs> No, I have some keepers. You don't understand the amount of gold for one of my babies. <laughs> Save some babies! Well, we did start by... I'm dropping bombs like uh, Hiroshima. You did say that you independently expelled mucoid plaques, so... <laughs> I mean, most people have to do a two-day cleanse, so... That was at a seance once. I was at a seance, and I expelled some mucoid plaque. Well, that's uh, something that they had to change about the exorcist, is they couldn't have everything fly out of her butt. I find The Exorcist to be a very sensuous, sensual, sexual movie. It could be uh, with a certain <laughs> with a certain eyes. Yeah. Oh God, I, this is a horrible road to go down. I'm not even. I'm trying to think of what not to say so I don't have to edit more. Uh, <laughs> This is oh by the way this is why I put this on this is this dude needle contaminated pork <laughs> he's this guy that is a one man band in a uh, in this hazmat, hazmat suit, suit yeah. and his microphone is embedded in his gas mask ah. so and he just plays to a drum machine but he plays live guitar and it's really complex disgusting slammy shit that is squealy with pinch harmonics and shit I'm not gonna lie it looks kind of fun. But he just comes out like like he, he play some place like the uh, the um, lion's lair or something, <laughs> and uh, but this I'd is go. this is what I I brought this up because this is one man's completely unfettered vision where yeah. he's like I can't even have anyone else because see if he had someone else. Doing They'd this. all talk him out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> but this is brilliant. <laughs> well, first thing they talk about was the, the the band title, Needle Contaminated Pork. But okay, by the way, this dude, uh, he's like from from. Is like, there a story behind the name, or is it just like is, is it a theme? Like it's just all the, the bad songs thing. About, it's just like all. He's FDA. warning you. He's warning you. Well, he is wearing a hazmat suit. He he goes to grocery stores and he plays the refrigerated <laughs> meat sections. Uh, I presume, like as a safety measure. But uh, yeah, by the way, what a shocker. This guy, fucking huge in Japan. I have a feeling we're all big in Japan and we just don't know about it. Phil's Chamber, big on, uh, big in Australia. What's up, Australia? Oh, hey now. Oh, that's good to hear because I love. Uh, yeah, I think I love... we have four listeners there. <laughs> Well, if any of them are ladies, I have a huge crush on Australian ladies, and I find that to be the most uh, um, uh, comforting accent uh, in, a, in a woman. So please hit me up. Yes, I, I need to be babied by an Australian woman. I know you're doing this as a bit. I, that, but the, the, the only bit is that I want an Australian <laughs> woman. What are you talking about? Well, I was just going to say that I actually think this might be the best way for you to approach modern dating right now. Uh, via podcast, all yeah, right. Broadcast out, and then anyone interested, give uh, give Papa Dre here. Uh, a I'm, call. I'm I'm casting for broads. Bring them, bring them <laughs> towards me. Especially if they're Australian and they like uh, needle contaminated pork, by which I mean sex with me. <laughs> <laughs> Yuck! That's gonna break that just sounds like the move that you do. That's not actually sex. You do a counterclockwise needle contaminated pork. <laughs> it's a swirl. That's a that's presumptuous, Jerry. Sure. 
I've thought for maybe 15 years, but I hope that there is some type of afterlife because I'm 100% going into some sort of Beetlejuice type like business. I'm not going to cross over. I'm just going to offer to haunt and, and exercise the living. Oh boy, homes. you'd be a really brutal Beetlejuice. It'd be fucking so much fun. But the things you would do. <laughs> it's almost difficult to imagine what you'd do with that power because there's no clear like boundaries on oh, his I've scare thought power. About it. Yeah, what, what I've thought of I don't know. My basic thoughts on Beetlejuice, like to me, um, he was never human. He's mm. never been human. Okay, he's, okay. He's like some kind of a, a, a demon or a thing, and he's, he only knows how to try to pretend to talk to humans. That's why he's so bad at it. But he's incredibly, <laughs> I don't know, like, but he's in, like he's he's all desire and anger and hatred and stuff. And like the first thing he wants to do is rape that guy's wife. Yeah. And he's like, come here, come here, come here. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> what, what? And it's like, well, I am here to, to ask you to do something for us. Like, what? Oh, yeah, whatever. Oh, OK, yeah, sure, sure. It's like, <laughs> and uh, he, remember, he has all these references. Like he, he, he finds out they're humans. He starts talking to them like, oh, I went to Juilliard. I saw the exorcist. I did this. So it's like, yeah. he, I, I don't know. I have a lot of weird theories about Beetlejuice. No, that makes a, I, that I, makes a ton of sense though that he's so, because that also plays into like the administrative lady. She's a, like when she makes the whorehouse to keep him busy. Yes. Like it shows right. that they've dealt with this they've dealt with this nuisance before. Like yes. that makes it so that because they know how to deal with people because they deal with people with bureaucracy. The whorehouse people... was my idea. <laughs> Beetlejuice is out of control. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, so clearly he's a yeah, the, I've always assumed that he was just a really twisted like human that never decided to cross over and decide to live by his own rules. Very kind interesting. Of thing. No, but I like yeah. your theory much better where he's a demon wearing like a human mask. That's why he's got all the like lustful, sinful desires, but also like recognizes that he can't just be a demon in front of people. Well, it's to it, get what he wants. It's strangely. Well, okay. Well, and this is how deep I got with this. I actually down. Um, Beetlejuice was written by Michael McDowell, who was a huge eighties horror paperback author. And most people don't even understand that. It was his original idea way before fucking Tim Burton came in at all. And I downloaded the original Beetlejuice script, which was pre Tim Burton. And mm. it's, 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 a, it's the same story, but with a way different slant on it. It's way darker, kind of closer to, geez, I don't know. What would I compare? Like Beetlejuice is not friendly or funny at all. <laughs> and, and he's more kind of like, well, I, he's kind of, you can tell from the script that he's based on kind of the concept of like a, a genie or a gin or something. Mm -hmm. Once you let him out of the bottle, you can't control him and he, yeah. he keeps getting crazier and, and shit. And, but I, I always thought it was strange and fascinating. And this is the thing that comes from the script. The fact that his name is, you know, quote unquote Beetlejuice, which is actually that, um, it's like the name of that uh, star. Yeah. It's uh, which is Edelgeist or whatever. Like he, he's <laughs> named after this star. He's like mm -hmm. this, uh, I don't know, this like celestial being or yeah. whatever. He's not human. He's this thing that's like waiting on the, the outskirts of humanity for a human to like invoke him like a genie. And then he comes in and he's all opportunistic and tries to, to take over your shit. So he's a very evil character. And then, uh, Tim Burton's sensibilities took it and made it like a lot sillier and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, rewatching the movie, Baroque and weird. And you just wouldn't mind living in that universe, like the, by the rules I still of that find universe. It scary though, I'm scared of that universe. I couldn't live in that, like the that afterworld that they go to. I find that really disturbing. I, I well, because you hate <laughs> bureaucracy, so like having to go to the ultimate right. bureaucracy That's is it. like a huge nightmare. Yep, you're right. That's it. That you nailed it. But I, there, I'd be like Beetlejuice and I'd be trading uh, my ticket with someone else and get my head shrunk. Well, this gets back to our original uh, uh, theme here. What what kind of Beetlejuice you'd be? You'd be uh, you, you wouldn't be Beetlejuice. You'd be Freddy Krueger. <laughs> that's a good Freddy point. Freddy Krueger is just a, a Beetlejuice that's you know, yeah. really rude. <laughs> he's not just rapey. He's also murdering. You know, <laughs> he'll put a baby in you and slice it out. Of Beetlejuice you. just wants to, I don't know, marry you. And uh, you know, one of my favorite things though is like when they go, "Hey, here's the devil's whorehouse," and he gets all excited and stuff. He's he he he, he like puts his finger in his mouth and it's like he sucks <laughs> his finger and it, it's like he's sucking the scum off of his teeth. With his, <laughs> And rubbing it, on, I, I can't describe it. But you know what I'm He's talking about. He's just freshening it up for for his. Yeah, he he made like a suction there to pull the scum off of his teeth because he's gonna go bang some whores. Well, maybe he's just cleaning off the finger he was gonna use. 
have you been to Disney and seen the guy yeah. that imitates him? Yeah. There's nobody that can imitate Universal you know. Studios. Oh, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. Universal. Well, the same guy does Doc Brown too. So, what in the? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, they are. Yeah, I guess it's the same hair, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, so doing the October horror movie marathon that I've been doing. Yeah, yeah, which been, is great. I've been following it on uh, we've Instagram. We've been watching a bunch of uh, our DVD collection instead of watching like anything streaming. Just like we got the collection, might as well watch yeah, it. Yeah, might as well put it to use. And the worst resolution helps so many of these movies. It's not even funny. Like not in, And not in like a, a bad way. You got to remember that these movies were shot with the assumption that they'd be seen at a similar resolution. Even, yeah. on, even on a film screen, like film technically doesn't have a resolution resolution but like the power at which you're able to project that shit and like the clarity and like all sorts of technology improvements have come along the way but at the time like 80s 60s 70s like looking at these movies that you they never were planned to have like a 4k zoom in right like you even though it's possible yeah. the technology didn't allow that actually to be seen in the way that we can see it now and i feel like that taints a lot of people when they watch horror off of like Netflix because it'll stream the 4K version of it with and you'll see the seams in the makeup that were you can't see on DVD oh, because especially effects work yeah. I think a lot of stuff was filament real. you see filament <clears throat> all over the place moving stuff and you don't really see that so, yeah. yeah it was like it was based on oh this will be fudged yeah. on on the film when it's stretched on the on the screen special yeah. effects were never they never intend were never intended to be seen like the same way you'd see it face to face. There was always the understanding that the camera is going to obscure something, the tr- film transfer is going to obscure something, and you had like these wider boundaries of shit that you could get away with, right? Quick effect like onset fixes, and you're seeing all these things that like would never have been seen at a, a lower resolution. So I think that it taints people when like they look at it, they watch you know Netflix on their laptop with awesome resolution, and they can see all these like laughable. Things that you wouldn't, you didn't even see in the movie at the premiere. You know what I mean? Now, this baby here, my laptop, mm-hmm. I can unplug it. And uh, as long as we carry this and this stays plugged in, <clears throat> we were a remote around the house. So we can go downstairs and attack Jack Brown. Hey! As long as we keep all the cables and we walk carefully. So <laughs> what would your thoughts be about attempting that? I'd be I'd be interested in attempting that. All right. Should we go on a now, jack attack? Okay. All right. Well, yeah. Now, um, yeah, you got to help me here. Like, um, I need you to carry that. And then uh, just make sure that, that doesn't come disconnected from this. Now, <laughs> this is going to be... This right, is not going to work. Now, proceed. Proceed. You're leading the proceed way, sir. Proceed to the route. Yes. Uh, Pete's and I are now carrying our entire pod set up. Oh, boy. We're getting some uh, some things are buzzing. Yes, we're going backstage here. All right. Down. All right. Oh, There's no one out here. You went the wrong way already. Where are you going? I was checking over here. No, back he's, he's downstairs. Back yeah, back it up. Back it up. Uh, if any USB gets unplugged here, that's the end of the uh, end of the show. Now, if you see a light at the end of the stairs, that means go down. Go down. All right, hold on. I'm stepping on something. Hold on. Watch out for the cables. All right, we're still recording. Heading down the stairs. This is a this is a found footage podcast. Why is there a children's dress? Wrong way. Don't look at the dress. <laughs> Ad roller. Knock on the door here. Now we're at the door of Jack Brown. Is Jack Brown home? Jack Brown? Jack Brown. Are you alive? Are you masturbating? Jack Brown. Jack Brown's penis is hanging out of his pants right now, live on the show. (laughs) Either way, we, we are podcasting live right now. Yeah, come on up. <laughs> yeah, don't get up, Al. Thanks, bud. <laughs> well, I can't believe we... Yeah, still recording. Uh, hey, we did our first remote. So uh, I'll edit. Like you said, the show is constantly evolving. <laughs> <laughs> Downwards. Evolving downward. I haven't seen you in a while, buddy. Give me the Jack Brown update minute. Uh, you know, it's just weird, and it's day by day. Um, weird how? Let's get into that. What kind of weird are you experiencing? Is it paranormal? Is it supernatural? 
A uh, little bit of column A, a <laughs> little bit of column B. So what kind of supernatural things are happening at the record store? Now we have a podcast now that we're talking about supernatural things happening at the record store. Uh, no, I, w- I wish it was something that interesting. No, uh, no, it's just the same amount of dumbasses that you see every day, day in, day out. Now, Jack, have you seen the new Halloween? I did see it on Saturday. I haven't seen it yet, but I'd love to hear your, your guys' thoughts on it. This goes without saying, but we're going to spoiler a bunch of shit, and I don't want to hear anything about it. So just spoiler away. Which <laughs> I'm going to... I would rather probably watch Resurrection Damn. than uh, Halloween 2018. Damn. Wow. And I might regret that wow. statement at some point, but that's that's how I feel at this time. Like... I just kind of went into this movie with the expectation that I'm going to see Carpenter's hand present in this because of the way that he's been promoting it and all these photos of him on set. The build up and hype to the movie was that John Carpenter has given this his seal of approval. He's involved. He's doing the soundtrack. He's on set. Like all these things to me that would imply that he was being utilized in some way. I didn't connect with a single character in that movie. And a big part of that, maybe Laurie to some degree I could connect with, but everyone else in the movie I can like, I just couldn't even care about like one iota. There was definitely almost a little bit too much Danny McBride on it, the writing wise. I don't know what. Really? Uh, that would. That's my take personally. But how, well, I I felt like the dialogue that he wrote, like because clearly he wrote the dialogue parts, right. like especially there's a very clear like Danny McBride section you're very much kept in the dark about what Michael Myers is up to in this movie, which is kind of a different choice, you know? Like, it has its own feel to the edit. (laughs) And the other thing, like, all the homages to the fucking... to the original, I felt like they were ham-fisted and kind of like, eh, you could have... you didn't have to include it. Like, it didn't feel like a cool reference to me. It felt like an obligation. You know what I mean? More forced. Yeah. Almost, yeah. Yeah. I definitely thought they could have knocked out a lot of the people in the cast. Yeah. And I also question, like, just the idea of Lori having children if she's actually as paranoid as the movie makes her out to be about Michael coming back. Like, that, it seems like since she takes every single security precaution and thinks it through to the nth degree for the final scene is that one that she didn't consider, which is staying childless. Which I know is a curmudgeonly fucking, like, childless man thing to say, but... Can I tell you why? Because of Terminator 2 is why. (laughs) That's why. Because they're ripping off Terminator 2. That's the only reason why. And in Terminator, it was a perfect reason for her to have a kid. Because that's the whole impetus of the plot. Yes. But this shit, yeah, it's just an imitation. If the character was approached in the way that I felt like it should, which is her taking the security, like, worry to the nth degree, like, the whole theme is that the lines between them are blurred after all this years because of like the obsession between the two but what about all that rich rich psychological and emotional ground that was mined by h2o all just thrown out all thrown out yeah all thrown out all those haircuts they're not out all those fads thrown out all the there there was such a michael myers had a fucking devin sawa haircut in that movie god yeah i love the different michael myers masks like they did that thing on (laughs) on on, um the uh the core on shutter where they they did the different versions of the one in four is like a, what the <laughs> fuck? Like you buy something now at the grocery store better than that? It's shocking, isn't it? Well, there was one that was even worse. The stunt one, it was, which is in <laughs> yeah, exactly. One was the old Shatner. One was the the, the, the uh, later Shatner. Cracked recently put out an article where they talked about the histories of the masks for each movie, no. and uh, how the, you know everyone knows that the first one was a William Shatner mask that had some hair added to it. Everyone knows that white. except Shatner. I don't know if he <laughs> accepts that. What do you mean? That doesn't work right. That's clearly not me. As a kid, when I first read that, William Shatner was already old and fat, and I remember like looking, like trying to reckon in my head how that was a William Shatner mask, not really realizing in the seventies he was like a young, good-looking. You know guy. what? You, uh, you got to go T.J. Hooker era, and then you go, oh, that's that. T.J. Hooker is just Michael Myers jumping on the hood of cars. If you were watching it. <laughs> Mr. Brown, your focus is always music, I feel. I'd like to hear your thoughts specifically on the soundtrack. 
I thought it was pretty good. I mean, they used a lot of the original... They used, a, I mean, obviously, a lot of the original equipment. When I heard it all the way through the first time, I was like, eh, it's, it's good. I like the fact that they're using the original equipment, but there weren't any peaks or valleys. Yeah. Like the... For, or like, you know, like all the good carpenter shit. Mm-hmm. I feel like the soundtrack was really unnotable. Not the, in, like, it wasn't good, but then there, what was really different from the original other than like some natural modern enhancements of like let's add some instruments that hit the middle bass tones and let's add some stuff that shakes the 808s and it felt like remixes rather than like a whole new anything Jack did you see Mandy yeah I've seen Mandy about four times (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure, you know, I was trying to segue. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh what were you I don't think we never got a a debriefing on Mandy with you at least. I think Patrick and I have debriefed on Mandy a little bit. Our opinions are on record for everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What have you thought uh what did you think of Mandy? I thought it was actually probably one of the more interesting movies I've seen lately. Yes. Um agreed. Good God, the whole acid trip thing. <laughs> Every time I watch it, I'm always getting something new out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you accept that acid can bend your reality, then you can accept a lot of things that are happening in this film kind of like almost at face value because now you understand that to at least some degree it's influenced by drugs and acid and like maybe our version of what we're seeing is influenced by that that as well because we see it through Nicolas Cage's perspective and he alters his perspective and the movie changes and all these different things so it's like it gives free license for some of that like cool artistic flair without like and and able to like sacrifice whole issues of plot and motivation because it's like almost unnecessary because it's a slice of time between these two people that is really fucking weird. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jack, I'm sorry, I got to take the mic back because I had to tell this story. All right. Oh well, I'll tell it to you. Oh. I, I need a set of cans though, so I so I can so I can make love to the mic here. All right. All right. Oh. Okay, I'm putting pizza's cans on. They're nice and warm like a toilet seat. This is great. This is really great. I love uh, feeling... Oh, he's got the headphones all completely flipped around. This is fantastic. You're doing a great job there. Catbox story! Jack, I, I've never told you this story. Oh, wow. I am in for a treat. This is a, a, a true story as usual, uh, just like... Uh, I went to a party with my friends when I lived in Arkansas. We went to a party. It was in uh, Louisiana because my friend was going to the... um, When she was going there, she was an art student at Louisiana Tech. My friend Becky... Who was uh, hilarious and a ginger, and she had big, crazy ginger hair, and she's my awesome friend throughout uh, high school. Shout out to Becky... Great artist uh, and shit. But uh, anyway, uh, she was nice enough to invite me to come and visit her at college and she'd invite me to come over and stay in her dorm and stuff for like a weekend and uh she'd take me to college parties and stuff so i got to experience the fun college shit via her and my other friends that were going to college at the time and this is uh how i really embarrassed myself this party was thrown by this really cool girl in her apartment, and she looked just like Uma Thurman from um, Pulp Fiction. She had the same oh, okay. same hair, same haircut, was dressed like that and everything. All right. And uh, I was trying to be hilarious at this party, and at the same time trying to be disarming and cool and stuff, and I really didn't have it, okay? I just really didn't have it, and I was trying to be overly affable. I was trying to be like a talk show host, so every time some hot girl would sit anywhere near me, I'd, I'd start trying to talk her up and you know make her laugh and Ooh, stuff and say, and it just came off. Yeah, this girl that was hosting the party, she sat down in front of me. It's like, hey, you know, oh, oh, hey, you look like uh, you're gonna say Uma Thurman. Oh wow, she knew what I was gonna say. Okay, well, let me come up with some new material, and uh, she was so uninterested in me. I was trying to talk to her, and she was kind of looking around me. And at some point, I go, hey, you know, I'm over here. And then my friend Becky leaned over and goes, she has a lazy eye. Ooh. 
She's looking at you. So that was one, strike one. Strike two was there was a room where everyone was going into to get stoned. And, you know, at the time you had to hide your stoneness. So, so like they'd go in there and then they'd come out and their eyes would be all watery and stuff. So, so uh, this hot <laughs> girl came out of the stone room and her eyes were all red and stuff. And so I like elbowed my way up to her and I said, what's going on in there? Are you guys watching beaches? <laughs> well, that got a zero. <laughs> now, so, but apparently they weren't watching beaches in there based on her reaction. <laughs> watching beaches? No. So uh, while I was talking to that girl, there's a little tiny, like, kind of hip apartment with, like, you know, hardwood floors and shit. The girl that I was talking to about beaches, uh, she goes... What what I was dressed very bizarrely at the time. She goes, what, "Were you wearing golfing pants?" Like I am, in fact. And then I I looked beside me, and there was a cat box, and the cat box was empty. Well, empty-ish. And I stepped into it. I just said, "I'm going to step inside the cat box." And I stepped into it, and then I pretended I was playing golf with the one pebble that was in there. I was I was like uh, mimicking that I was playing golf. I literally stepped inside the cat box. And I thought that would be the funniest thing in the world. And I looked beside me and there was like a cloud of dust in the shape of a woman. <laughs> and then my I looked over even further and my friend Becky had her big giant ginger head in her hands going, why did I invite this fucking loser to wow. my college party. Like, <laughs> you guys watching beaches in there? You literally just hit, <clears throat> we were in an apartment, I still heard a cricket. <laughs> oh, wait till I get in the cat box. That's really gonna close the... That is a good bit. For you! I wish if you guys were there, it would have been a 10, an A plus bit. You guys but, watching uh, beaches? <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about beaches in the cat box and lazy eyes. This guy's a genius. We're huge fans. <laughs> Where were you guys when I needed you? <laughs> After all that happens and you walk out, like we come out behind you and we're like, that was awesome, man. What's next? <laughs> So, how many more parties did Becky invite you to? That, that was the last one. That was the last one. Yeah, that was the the coup de gras. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jack has to has to step out to. Uh, Jack yeah. has to take his suboxone right now. <laughs> oh well. Uh, thanks for dropping by our our area of the neighborhood. Yeah, thanks, Jack, for for coming in and uh, espousing your right wing views. Yeah, that Jesus was weird. Christ, sir. I'm going to oh. have to edit most of that out. Yeah, our audience and, and is not responding to that. And the sexism, very strange. I don't understand the problem you have with the Inuits, but they're fine people, Jack, you know? Well, that's what they say. I just find your white nationalist views kind of strange, considering, and if you'll forgive me, your, your Chinese descent. Well, if I may, I will forgive you, Pizza. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I, I will that. forgive you Thank for you. saying that. <laughs> There's a reason we invited you on the show, and that's to explore these these complicated views of a modern American man. The filth chamber is an open forum. Anyone that walks into the room, <laughs> yeah, just come on in. Yes, uh, anyone off the street, this is an open invite. Open if you door. walk into the filth chamber, we will allow you a forum and equal time. But uh, leave us a review wherever you listen to this. I know that this is a like clear <clears throat> pandering, but. It actually helps us out. It makes more people aware of the show, and it's the freest way you could support us. I disagree with everything he just said. Don't do any of that. Thank you. <laughs>